we've had a very good day. Um, we had a lot of discussion. Um, we, um, we, we went through at least six sheets of, uh, of paper. And um, uh, for half the day, we kind of just got to know each other and what everybody was doing. And drink lots of coffee. Um, we tried out the new super duper cof coffee machine with the tablet on it, which is very good. Um, no, the, 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 the first half of the day was to understand the aspects of each other's projects and then find some common ground between them. Um, and once we'd done that, we realized that we were using perhaps three different uh, wireless, uh, uh, dare I say, standards. We were using um, the sub one gigahertz um, low power, um, uh, which is the, the, the ISM, um, so either 433 megahertz or 868 megahertz. That forms the backbone of the um, open energy monitors um, uh, uh, transmit unit to their data concentrator. Uh, 433 is great bec in, uh, inside the home because um, uh, being a, a lower frequency, it has good penetration of um, concrete and other dense building materials, uh, much better so than uh, some of the 2.4 gigahertz stuff. So uh, we've got uh, low power sub one gigahertz. Um, we are also doing things potentially with Wi-Fi um, in terms of the ESP8266 and also to throw into the mix um, I was keen to bring in some Bluetooth low energy devices. Now the great thing about BLE is it's supported by both flavors of smartphone um, and um, uh, it's very easy to use your, your Android or your Apple smartphone to control devices over BLE and also to extract data from devices using BLE. But also um, BLE, you can have a peer-to-peer -peer type network. So the idea uh, is to have some sort of a, um, uh, a Bluetooth low energy thermostat, which is either a room-based thermostat or an individual-based thermostat, say on a pendant that can be worn perhaps by a senior citizen that can interact with, uh, with the whole ecosystem. So to, to give you an example, normally this thing attempts to be smart. It, if you've got a mechanical TRV at home, you're used to putting it somewhere between frost and maximum, and then it maintains a temperature around here, and this will do the same thing. But normally it observes, it also observes your occupancy of the room and tries to cut the heat when you're not around and when you're not likely to be back, which is uh, fine if you all agree on what that temperature should be. So this measures the air temperature around it to drive that. But if you could then have, can you have you got your dongle, the, the Bluetooth little pendant thing? Um, my voluptuous assistant will um, uh, show the uh, BLE. So if you gave this to um, an individual to wear about themselves or to put, oh, no, the little Bluetooth one, this, this that one. thing, whoops, or throw on the floor, uh, put on the coffee table near them, then that takes over and it's its thermostat, its temperature sensor, which would drive this instead. So that's quite a novel idea, that as you walk into the room, your temperature profile is then what drives the device. And, and also, if you're, sitting at, if you're sitting on a sofa only about 600 or 1,000 millimetres off the floor, the temperature down here is a lot lower than it is up here. So having a personal thermostat that you have close to you means that your little bubble of heat is going to best be reflected by the overall control system. So if, for example, a senior citizen who's spending a lot of time fairly immobile, perhaps sitting down in a chair for long periods of time, it means that they have the maximum level of comfort. And being a personal thermostat, they would have some sort of a um, a button on it where they can increase the heat level to suit their requirements. 
So that could all be done using Bluetooth Low Energy. Can we chuck in LoRa as well? All right, okay. Um, I learned a, a lot about LoRa. Um, uh, I actually went out with a girl in 1980 called LoRa, but that's another story. Um, this is, um, what's the acronym? Long range, low power, um, yes. Um, this is quite a new initiative which um, allows kind of um, sort of kilometer distance type or multi-kilometer distance connectivity between a low bandwidth network and a device. Um, so. I, the way I sort of rationalized it, it's Twitter for IoT devices where they're sending 140 ca characters up to the cloud and they're maybe getting uh, four character expletives back again. Um, that was my understanding. Is that uh, about right? Uh, so <laughs> I, IBM, who were actually really helpful to us uh, a few months ago and so on, got us on LoRa. Um, it's really the smart city end of the Internet of Things. So curiously, it's on the same band and using effectively very similar radios to these ones. But these, so BLA gets you within a room, sort of 10 meters. These will get you sort of 100 meters. And LoRa, which is in the same band as this, is IM, ISM, on, on licensed stuff, will get you, well, one or two kilometers in an urban area and maybe 10 kilometers in a... Uh, rural area. So you, you can see there's a whole span of different radio devices. There's not just one radio internet for things, but the LoRa one, we are putting sensors in bus shelters in London. If you see a couple of dodgy looking guys putting things with wires in them in seats in London buses, that's okay, that's us. I'm very disappointed we haven't been arrested yet, by the way. Um, and so the idea is we can go to the bus operator and we can say, yes, it really is possible to put a low power radio that will last for several months into one of the existing voids in the bus shelter, in our case, to sense the presence of people. Uh, and so it's, as you said, well, four different, five different uh, radio things. So we were talking about bringing some of them together. Right, OK. Um, we realized that we're dealing with multiple radio standards. Um, there was no one size fits all. So we then thought about, well, what about the, um, the data packets that we're trying to send between these different radio standards? So the last couple of hours of our discussion today was um, basically to, um, to look at uh, different packet formats, um, some of which Damon has already ha put a significant amount of work into, that um, are not only authenticated but secure. So within, uh, let's say, a typical um, packet uh, of, um, th that uh, we can send over, uh, say, the RFM69 uh, ISM transceiver, uh, we can get a fully uh, authenticated and secure packet uh, that has a 32-byte payload. And so we discussed ways in which we could pull all this lot together and get it into the get it compatible with the Open Energy Monitor Emon Pi, which is their uh, their base station come come gateway. Um, so just as a little example, IoT tends to be done. Security is done, if at all, as an afterthought and often badly. Um, uh, you know, security is a cost, not a benefit in many people's minds. Now, my view is, if we're going to put this on 100 radiators, well, you know, that's too bad. If we're going to put it on 400 million radiators, we really don't want it to be possible for bored teenagers to turn people's heating off till it breaks. My nightmare scenario, never mind the privacy of burglars being able to tell when you're out, is also the bored teenager sitting on the 17th floor of a tower block, completely disabling the heating in the nursing home next door. Uh, in the middle of winter. So you've got to get security right. Um, and so this thing is now spitting out, I mean, I'm sure you're all feeling the radio waves here, is now sending out stats about uh, the room it thinks it's in and the radiator it thinks it's controlling every four minutes in a completely secured frame format, which, so as you say, it has an authenticated element, which is the things like the IDs and the structure of the pack and what type it is, and a completely secure payload protected with now, I haven't written this myself, don't worry, it's not a homebrew thing, it's AESGCM, so your browser can talk that as well. 
Um, and that we've had a number of pairs of a number of sets of eyes look at the implementation and the design and so on. So I'm sure there will be amendments to be made, but this I think would be tough for the NSA to break. And on, on that subject, by the way, um, I don't know if you remember the little Prism uh, uh, program that uh, where they were eavesdropping on lots of people's telephone conversations and so on. Uh, that little Prism logo they stole from my dad. So we've got a connection in the NSA already. So the point is that if we were to, if, if the packet format we've come out with this is also usable for OEM, then suddenly OEM's internal wireless communications are safe enough that no one is going to be able to mess with them, either to turn things on or off or whatever in an unauthenticated way, or to eavesdrop on the traffic. So that is the aim in getting the authentication and the encryption. Of course, you can just hit any spies with pieces of equipment that you've got to hand. And also because some of us are still into hardware, uh, we had a very good session uh, at a Google Hangout with um, Martin Harazanov, who's based in Sofia in Bulgaria. Um, Martin is rapidly becoming the expert at um, uh, porting applications onto the ESP8266 and um, uh, by means of um, uh, a video link he was able to give us his presentation. Uh, Martin um, some months ago produced this uh, rather good three-channel relay board. Uh, one of our intentions is to build, this has already got the 8266 in, our intention is to put a little board in this area which uh, we can put the um, uh, RFM69 and also a Bluetooth low energy module, probably the RF Duino, which uses the um, NRF5182 uh, device. Build that into here. This goes uh, in place of your central heating controller and this acts as the bridge between the various networks. So that's going to be a little ongoing project. How are we doing? Time is close. So um, our proposals, we came up with eight things, most of which we've covered. So uh, we're going to do the relay board with BLE and the RFM. Uh, we're going to have a continuing in investigation into the NRF 51 and 52 Bluetooth low energy devices. Um, the microcontroller board, the Y node 5 that I um, did for the open uh, inverter, um, that's going to be made available. Um, we've had some sponsorship from Ragworm and they've produced a number of PCBs for us. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the boards tomorrow. So perhaps at the next OSHUG meeting, we're going to be able to hand some of those out for anybody who wants to play with them. Um, and uh, we've decided that this um, Open Energy Interoperability Group is going to meet again during OSHCAMP, which is in early September up in Hebden Bridge. Right. <laughs>